So uh, we're going to look, take a look today at the uh, Joomla 3.3 release of the CMS, uh, some of the features that got into it, some of the changes, and uh, we're going to also take a look beyond Joomla 3.3. If you've been following me on Twitter the last couple of days, I've been kind of dropping hints about some stuff. You're going to find out about that here shortly. So a lot of faces in this room I don't recognize. So, hi, I'm Michael. I am about to be an Army veteran. I'll be out of the Army actually in June, having spent nine years in as a IT specialist. Uh, been doing... <laughs> I've been uh, doing PHP work since 2010, kind of picked it up as a hobby to kill some time while I was overseas. And uh, been making Joomla sexy since 2010. Joomla is where I learned how to do PHP. So, like I said, we're looking at the Joomla 3.3 release. And what you see here is one of our official marketing uh, banners for the release, covering most of the features that got in, a couple of changes since this was created. Uh, one notable thing that's going to be missing from the 3.3 release that's on that banner, front-end module editing. Uh, there's, there was a couple of uh, concerns about it at a technical level, and the PLT decided we'll go ahead and skip out on it for this release, address those concerns, make it a more powerful feature for a future release. If you'll remember back in January, we put out a blog post about raising the uh, minimum PHP version for this release. As of April 22nd, the date that 3.3 will be released, we will be requiring PHP 5.3.10. If you're on a host that's using an older version of PHP, remember that from 3.0 to 3.2, we supported 5.3.1. Uh, we have extended security support for the 3.2 series through October. This gives time for users who had upgraded to get their hosts to update, move over to a new site, whatever the case may be, without falling out of support so quickly. Now, uh, with that being said, take a look at some of the cool stuff that's gone in the 3.3 release. First thing I want to cover is security. Security being the big thing that drove us to start this release planning cycle. We improved our password hashing mechanism. We're now using bcrypt for your password hashes. Uh, if you remember, we tried to do this in 3.2, but it was a little too complicated and caused a couple of issues, so we backed out for a little bit. We've done it right this time, and uh, it, we hope that it will be a more successful rollout this time. Uh, if you remember, also, during the 3.2 series, we introduced two-factor authentication to the CMS, the first major CMS to do so. And we also improved the security related with our Remember Me mechanism. A new feature to the 3.3 release also, administrators will now have the ability to require users to reset their passwords. In the admin user manager, you'll, when you're editing a user, there will be a toggle to require a password reset. You can also do it through the batch function. And I, I shared a little uh, script that you could use as a cron job to require users to reset their passwords if they haven't done so in a certain amount of time. Uh, that script's actually on my uh, personal blog. I can uh, publish the link to that again. I tweeted it a couple of days ago. Next thing we're going to look at, JavaScript conversions. From 1.5 into the 3 series, the CMS has been heavily dependent upon MooTools as its JavaScript framework. And those of you that use the CMS, you probably be aware that a lot of template developers, extension developers, they use a lot of jQuery in their extensions. And when we went to Bootstrap with 3.0, we brought in jQuery. So, one of the things that we did with the Google Summer of Code program last year is we had a student who worked on converting a lot of our JavaScript from MooTools to jQuery. And a good chunk of that went into 3.2, a little bit more went into 3.3. All in all, over 25 different JavaScript elements, either simple two or three lines of code or some very complex implementations have been converted over from MooTools to jQuery. That doesn't mean that MooTools is not there anymore. There's still some dependencies. And if you're actually using MooTools in your own extensions, the files are still there. The API calls are still there if you need it. But we highly, highly encourage you to start 
converting over to jQuery if you're using new tools, there will come a day where the CMS says goodbye to it. Next thing I want to cover, uh, we've done some improving to our routing performance. Uh, one of our contributors has gone through to optimize the performance of our routing classes. And what this actually did is it improved the caching mechanisms in those classes, so not as much um, memory requirements are needed. In my own tests of this, I actually saw about half a megabyte of memory less per page cycle and almost a second less of processing time. And we're also moving over to um, object-oriented router classes instead of uh, procedural code, more of a uh, PHP best practice these days. And this is all done in a backwards compatible manner, so transparently when you update, you won't see anything, but extension developers, as you start dropping support for 2.5, you'll want to start taking into account these changes to improve your own code. Next thing we're going to cover, microdata. How many are familiar with that, just out of curiosity? All right, a couple of you. Truth be told, I'm not the most spun up person on it either. I do know, though, that uh, it helps your CO. It helps improve uh, what data is available in search engines. And it makes that data more accessible to users who are doing searches, which in turn will help your site out some. Uh, there's plenty of material out on the internet that describes this better than me. A cool little thing for developers where we have some cloud storage APIs. This was done as a, a Google Summer of Code project last year also. Now the thing to note here is we're actually not putting these in the core distribution. Uh, one of the goals PLT has is to try to start slimming up the distribution so for these APIs, we're actually going to make them available separately with instructions to developers on how they can integrate them into their code and uh, install those APIs with ease. But when developers start using this code, they will have easy, easy access to Amazon, Dropbox, Google, Rackspace. Next thing we're going to cover, uh, Joomla Framework. Um, if you're not familiar with the backstory, the framework split off from the platform about a year ago. The platform has been the core of the CMS for the last eight years, and the framework has been a effort to modernize our code base and make it more available to the PHP community. And we're happy to say that we've started bringing back some of this framework uh, work into the CMS. For uh, CLI, command line applications, uh, we've got some new output processing handlers. <coughs> really, really, the only thing that it does with what we have in core is add some color to your output. But that API is done in a way to where developers can extend upon it and work with it with ease. The big thing is we've converted JRegistry to the framework's registry package. We chose this one because it was a simple, uh, it was a simple replacement. And because it is a API used very heavily throughout the CMS. And one of the things that we wanted to show is how we can integrate the framework code into the CMS, given all of the changes that have been made with that code base, and not break sites. And we're happy to, to, we're happy to say that we accomplished this quite well. You've probably heard it a couple of times. I like to think that 3.3 is going to be the most stable release of the CMS ever. Hands down, the code base, I think, is probably the most mature that we've had in a long time. Um, 2.5, when it was released, was still getting features, still wasn't forward supporting with the 3 code base. So it didn't really mature until partway through the release series, whereas 3.3, uh, oh, yeah. Through the overall um, major 3.x series, there's less features now, there's less bug fixes, and that proves that we have a more stable API 
at supports our recommendation that sites are using 3.3 and you don't necessarily need to wait until we get to a LTS release to start planning your updates. Overall, in the 3 series, we've brought in a lot of great features, a lot of great enhancements into the code base to help prove its stability, to improve its adoption in the internet marketplace, and just to brag about ourselves for a little bit. We were the first CMS to out-of-the-box support responsive web design with the release of 3.0 in September 2012. We brought in two-factor authentication, the first major CMS to do so. Uh, we prove our stability through enhanced unit testing. We have a great suite of system tests also. So we, we are able to more quickly now than two years ago catch issues and fix them without having to make several releases to uh, address issues. And we've, we've had some great successes with the Google Summer of Code program over the last couple of years. That's where a lot of our multilingual enhancements came in. The redesigned template manager that went into 3.2. Those are uh, some of the top examples of Google Summer of Code. We're actually finishing up the uh, project selection, selection for this year's program. And we're looking forward to some great new features for a future release of the CMS. If you're not aware of our timeline, uh, this week re we released the first beta for 3.3. Uh, next week we'll be pushing out another beta release. Uh, a week before the stable release, we push out a release candidate. Uh, at that point, we try not to make any more changes to the code base to ensure we have maximum testing against a st uh, stationary target. And 3.3, uh, and a 3.2 release will be on April 22nd. If you remember what I said about 3.2 having extended security support, this 3.2 release for those sites that can't update immediately to 3.3 will include all of the bug fixes that have been committed since 3.2.3. So really the difference for the users that are stuck on 3.2 versus 3.3 will be the features. Just keep this in mind if you are in this situation. There's plenty of ways that you can help with pushing out this release. If testing is your thing, which it really could be everyone's, if you're using the CMS, you can install the beta. The link is available on our news announcement. Uh, just install it, install your favorite extensions, use the CMS as you normally would, make sure everything works as expected. If marketing is your thing, um, we also pushed out a blog post with the marketing information for this release. Hit up that link, get the information you need, and share it out. All right. So I did mention that I was going to share something important today. That's actually coming up right now. There's also an official announcement planned for about 20 minutes from now. So if you want to tweet about what you hear in here, don't use any specifics about what you're about to hear until after that announcement goes out. Kind of build up a little last minute suspense. So I did mention we're looking at 3.3 and beyond. Emphasis on beyond. Because we already have the next release of the CMS planned, Joomla 3.4, to be released July 15th, 2014. We also have a vision for this release. We're going to continue on with our microdata implementation. We're going to, we aim to get front-end module editing in this time, which we should given how close it is. Composer integration. If you're not familiar with Composer, it's a dependency management tool for PHP frameworks. And uh, it, let, it lets you bring in these external code bases with ease. How this helps us is we have our Joomla framework code in the code base now. It has its own dependencies. Um, part of the updated registry package brings in some Symfony code. And some of our external libraries are also listed on Composer. 
So by bringing the code this way, it actually makes it easier for us to manage our dependencies, and we'll be working through some of the uh, issues with, excuse me, with uh, installing in this way. And then lastly, decoupling com web links. As I mentioned earlier, also we have a goal to start slimming down our code base. In the 3.4 release, we want to look at the feasibility of pulling out com web links and the support issues it would involve how to, how to move towards a uh, slim distribution model. And we're going to use this as our working example to build out our policies, practices, whatever the case may be. I did mention a little earlier, I speak a little quick. Doesn't help that these guys ran a little late this morning. So I, I like to finish up with open discussion. Anything you've heard here, anything in general, PLT-wise, go ahead and discuss it. And if you want to talk with me offline, uh, my contact info is up here. I'm here all day. That's all I'll hand over here, Jay. I have a quick question. Um, we're going from 1.5 to 2.5 to 3 and 3 in the future. Is there going to be a lot of core changes? Like, from moving 1.5 to 3 is very difficult. So is there, is there going to be heavy core changes like that that we need to look, look out for? Going from 2.5 to the 3 series, it's a lot less drastic. The, the bigger change is in the templating because we made that switch over to Bootstrap. And over, overall, it, it really is a lot easier. I've done a couple of 2.5 to 3 updates and had no issues with core whatsoever. The bigger extensions, when, when they're supporting the 3 Series, it's really simple. If you've got extensions that aren't updated for the 3 Series, that's where your challenge is. I think that's been one of the, um, I, I guess, challenges. So as, a, as an agency, you know, I mean, we, we've got to build websites fast and get them out, be able to support them. And I think that that's been one of the big um, stumbling blocks for, for Joomla. There were, there were years when, I mean, we, we cranked out a lot of Joomla sites, and then, you know, when the 1525 thing came up, uh, we had to go back to clients and say, you know, you know that site we just built? we got to rebuild it. And, and uh, they, they weren't happy. So, you know, going forward, that's, and that's in the past, right? Right. Uh, but so going forward, it, it, do you anticipate? I understand that. I mean, you're grabbing the best code out there, and I mean, you got the best team of people, and this is always going to happen in the future. But um, WordPress just installs in place. Okay, so you can just hit install, and now you can do automatic installs, and and supposedly it's secure and, and uh, you know upgraded. Uh, we'll see how that you know works two or three years down the road. Uh, on that note, I've actually had a couple people mention to me that their automatic updates have broken sites. So it's not as great as they proclaim it to be. Yes, it's a great thing to do. Personally, I'd rather not do such a feature for Joomla because I think updating should be a explicit action taken by a site administrator. You wouldn't want me going into your site without you telling you that I'm changing it, would you? I think no, that's yeah. kind of what WordPress does. Yeah, but I think the, the fact that it, it, it sort of allows an automatic upgrade almost implies that, you know, most of the time it's going to be pretty smooth. And, and I don't think we've had too many that have broken. Right. Um, so I'm just, you know, I don't know if there's any more conversation about in the future or how this, you know, 3 4 is coming out. Is this going to change when version 4 comes out? Um, so we've kind of left. So, Joomla in some degree, and I really like it, and I want to come back to it. We've got these internal arguments, uh, but this is a thing that affects our, our business. So you brought up a lot of great points. First off, the migrations. The older team, they did make a couple mistakes with that 1.5 to 2.5 jump, uh, and that was actually about the time that I came into Joomla. And now that I'm on the leadership team and have the ability to influence this stuff, and now that we have a strong team that is in agreement about that complication, being that a lot of them are working for companies, implementing Joomla sites, maintaining their sites themselves, we're all in agreement that 
core needs to have migration built into it with everything. And we've been on that path since 2.5. No feature has come into the code base without a migration path. And we're getting better about backward compatibility. We're not perfect about it. I don't think we ever will be because there are going to be those off cases where we can't do anything about what this guy is doing. But overall, we do, we do take it a lot more seriously. And most of us have the goal of you should be able to support two major versions with one code base. So you can support 2.5 and 3 series on one code base, but we won't make a promise that 2.5 and 4 code will work together. Right before, yeah. So, and then uh, next thing you mentioned about release strategies. In the announcement that's publishing in about 13 minutes, uh, we actually cover a little bit on our updated development and release strategy. Um, we have a full, the full strategies will be published in the next few days. We kind of hit the big points that we think are going to draw the most questions in that announcement. Um, I don't have the notes on my slide, unfortunately, but hopefully that will address your concerns. I think what you said, just being able to cover two releases um, helps us out because then we, we at least know we can go back to our clients and say, you know, hey, this 2.5 site is working great, but just so you know, um, it, you know, at some point this thing's going to need to be upgraded, and, and uh, so th that should help us. Um, you mentioned the router. Uh, can you explain what the router does? So the, the routing classes is really the internal handling for taking the URL that, you, that a user put in and translating that into what component gets executed, uh, what content is getting loaded. It interfaces deeply with the menu system to load up your modules and everything. And it's really one of the bottlenecks in the application stack. If you look at the, um, debug, pro the debug output, uh, you'll, you'll see these lags in the, um, in the memory use and the time, the time execution, and it all comes from routing. So a lot of that, a lot of efforts gone into improving the performance in those classes and making them more modern slash forward compatible to help improve the routing situation. Uh, there's only so much that we can do in the three series without breaking backward compatibility, and I know one of the gripes is things like duplicate URLs. That's just the nature of how our routing system works, because you have the Ceph and the non-Ceph URLs, and then system-generated Ceph versus menu-generated Ceph. It, it, it is something on our radar, and we do intend to focus on that more, but there's only so much that we can do at any given point in the release cycle. Does that help any? Can you, yeah, that's good. Uh, can you define microdata? Someone help me. <laughs> I'm good. It works. Um, when you go to Google and you type in, you know, some search, uh, in your results, oftentimes you might see a picture of the author and maybe their bio, maybe some additional information. If it's a recipe type search, you might see the key ingredients and things like that. That's all implementing microdata, and the way that that is handled is just through some additional tags. If you think about like a span tag that actually shows up in your you know, HTML, uh, it's additional tagging that's done throughout the code of the page, and it improves your SEO because Google reads all that stuff. It often puts priority on sites that implement that and ranks you a little bit higher. Um, so things like that, just to basically just improve the way that your site will show up in search engine results. Is one of the key focuses in the Just follow up. So, if you have an event, for example, if you say uh, the time is this, the, da the, the day is here, the location is such, and the ticket cost is X, in the code you could say, here's the time, and the time is in a specific format. The date is in a specific format. The location, you've got the uh, geographic coordinates, for example. Google will take all that as structured data, not just Google, also Bing and, and those other guys. Because it's structured, they can manipulate it, display it to you, use it to improve search. But most, of, most importantly for SEO, they're going to say, this guy's serious about getting his information out to people in a way that can be reused. So it's called microdata, it's basically structured data. Yeah. And it's so, a lot like metadata. It, it, it's a kind of metadata. Yeah. It's like the new form. Right. 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 Right.
if you go to SEO Moz, there's just tons of information yeah. about microdata, and um, they'll also tell you in the pantheon of the importance of SEO where that ranks, and of course the algorithm is forever changing, so yeah. you have to go back and read it every week. Schema.org is the kind of central place for what that will Schema, S-C-H-E-M-A. How, how will that be handled on the back end for Alright, so right right now it's hard coded in and it is pulling some of the properties dynamically from things that you can expect, like dates will match up based on the spec. Uh, we have a microdata library, um, we're working on enhancing it a little bit more. There's a couple of uh, concerns with how you use it in the layouts, which is why we went with a hard coded option for 3.3. But that library will introduce a few params into different, uh, like article manager, contact manager, that will let you dynamically change certain things. So like um, articles, it might be a blog post, it might be a recipe, whatever the case may be. And there will be options in there where you can change each post based on that type. And that type will actually <coughs> dynamically load in uh, certain properties. We can't cover all use cases as, as a CMS, which is why you'll need overrides in some cases. I'd like us to not be in a place where you need an override for every possible configuration option, but I think the uh, library will come will help get to a point where you can use it out of the box for basic stuff. But if you need, if you want your more advanced customization, that's where you'll start getting into things. I think I saw another hand over. So, um, because you mentioned uh, editing modules from the front end, I just have a, is it gonna, are the modules then gonna fire all the content plugins? We should have it. I know I saw the discussion over the last couple of days, there's a couple of components that aren't firing all of the events. Uh, we need to get that standardized. So all, all of the plugin events, right. All the plugin events that are supported in other places as standard actions should be supported there too. Uh, first, in you know, full agreement about an upgrade path, um, working on this site where you're converting about 100 to 200 websites and there's a big update and you have to go back to clients, that's a major issue. Um, second was you were talking about cloud storage um, and looking at integrating that. How are you, how is it being integrated right now? Is it something where I could just say, you know, all images are going to be hosted on S3? And well, all right, so right now, it, what we have is just library type classes. We don't have a implementation of it per se. Uh, I know one, we have a, a GSOC project, or a student who's been with us the last couple of years. Uh, he's actually taking on the ever elusive update the media manager uh, thing that we've been asking for. So he might find a use case for those libraries in doing that work. But right now, it's more of a, a developer feature. So if a developer is doing some kind of uh, file management type stuff, they could use those APIs to push out their files to cloud, to Amazon, Google, whatever the case may be. Okay. Yes? Uh, have you all looked into any other uh, options for uh, backups, like maybe local network attack storage, anything like that that would be able to be kind of built in the ports that have gone with uh, some of the, the, the big guys? Backup services in core. Well, I mean, you're talking about storage, so. Right. It's one of the things we do. I don't think it, it's going to be something that we're going to do in core just because of the complexity of doing such a thing. We'll take the word backup out of there and just say it's storage, just in general. S storage, I mean, yeah, I mean, anyone could write additional libraries following that same logic. Uh, each of those libraries is standalone. They're not inheriting a common interface per se. So they're they're all they're all following uh, the developer API from the different companies, and they're implemented in a way that makes it easier for Joomla users to integrate. I, I know I've seen some API wrappers that get really complicated to use. We try to make it su stupid simple. Anyone else? I think the backup thing falls more on the, the host responsibility, you know, who you're hosting with. And I don't know if you're really good host. 
like I have mine set up for four times a day to a remote server, and if there was a disaster or whatever, I can go back a month, two months, I keep one year, stuff like that. Yes, <laughs> So I've got a uh, conceptual question that, that you may or may not be able to answer. So uh, I think midway through your talk, or maybe at the end of the first part of your talk, you said that you expect Joomla 3.3 to be the most stable, supported release yet, correct? But Joomla 3.4 is coming out in a month or two months. I'm trying to square that circle. Can you help me with that? So, like, all right, so we know past releases, we push out these minor releases, they get all these features and stuff, and they have their own kinks and everything, and it takes a little bit to get things stable. With 3.3, we're bringing in less features, and there's overall less bug fixes, and, and that's a reflection on the maturity and the stability of the code base. So instead of having a release with 500 tracker items like 3.2 was, which ended up being a colossal headache because of how much code we were pushing in, we have a slimmer uh, model this time, not as many features, less bug fixes because there's less issues in the code overall. And I think that will be, the, that will be a selling point for the stability of it. Make sense? Yeah, so 3.4 is going to continue on the stability track. Exactly. Exactly. We're, we're proving now that we can push out stable releases, integrating new features, and not have these issues that have caused us to leave users behind. I have one question, and this might not be the right place for it. Is there a simple way to describe the difference between like the core and the platform and the CMS? Because that's one thing I don't, I don't really I don't have a full grasp on all the, the nuances of that, or it's just a kind of a complex issue. Okay, so right now we have two main products. You've got the CMS and you've got the framework. The CMS is powered on what we call the platform which is basically the top level libraries. Uh, this was a common API. All of the extensions are building off of it unless they're off running and doing their own thing. And it, it's basically a trickle down effect. The framework is a lot of those platform classes, but modernized. And we dumped some of the CMS specific baggage. Uh, JHTML. It's a very CMS specific implementation and it's not really something that we could abstract to be usable outside the CMS. So in the framework we're not supporting it but the CMS will continue to do so because it requires it. So down the road as we start bringing framework stuff back into the application stack what you have is your framework la layer which is the actual Joomla framework product and whatever external libraries we're pulling in and the top level CMS API slash framework. Then you have your application layer which is the top level application classes where you actually the classes that actually get called when you hit that index.php file and then you've got your um, component layer for lack of better terms which is where your components get rendered and everything and that's kind of parallel to your templating layer which is where a lot of the back end and front end guys get into arguments because one thinks one should have control over the other. So that announcement's live. If you want to tweet about the 3 4 thing, uh, anyone else? On the versioning part of 3.3 and 3.4, what makes 3.4 3.4 instead of 3.3 three something? Um, so, as part of our refined development strategy, we're following a, uh, a standard called semantic versioning a lot more closely. 
and it defines when you increment each of the numbers in a version schema. A major version number, the, th the first three, should really only be incremented when you're making backwards incompatible changes. And we try to limit those to three. We're aiming to limit those to like three, four years, which in a web application cycle is almost an eternity. Then your second number is your minor number. And that's where you indicate that you're bringing in new features, per se. And then your, uh, that last number is a uh, maintenance number. And you're, you increment that when you're doing bug fixes type stuff. You're, and when you do a maintenance release, you're not supposed to bring in features. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm done babbling if you're done asking questions. <laughs>